We're now ready to begin investigating heteroaromatic compounds, which contain heteroatoms such as nitrogen and oxygen. We've seen already that lone pairs on, for instance, negatively charged carbons can occupy 2pz atomic orbitals and overlap well with adjacent pi bonds. This may give you the mistaken impression that any and all lone pairs on heteroatoms may participate in pi bonding with adjacent double or triple bonds. In this webcast, we'll see that the connectivity and geometry of heteroatoms determine the number of electrons they contribute to aromatic pi systems. Not all heteroatoms are created equal. The key question we'd like to answer is, for an atom with given connectivity in a heteroaromatic ring, how many electrons does the atom contribute to the aromatic pi system? Our primary motivation for answering this question is related to the reactivity of lone pairs as bases or nucleophiles. We've seen that electrons in aromatic pi molecular orbitals exhibit greater stability than more localized electrons in lone pairs or unconjugated pi bonds. Another way of saying this is that non-bonding lone pairs are typically higher in energy than pi molecular orbitals, and aromatic pi MOs are no exception. Stable aromatic lone pairs rarely act as bases or nucleophiles because of their stability. Lone pairs that are not part of aromatic pi systems, on the other hand, are free to act as bases or nucleophiles. Let's address some of the atoms and geometries you might see in aromatic rings. What we're going to do is to imagine each atom as sp2 hybridized, filling up the sp2 hybrids with electrons first before considering the 2pz atomic orbital that's left over. This first image depicts a neutral sp2 hybridized carbon connected to three other atoms. Notice that one valence electron of this carbon is in the 2pz orbital contributing to the aromatic pi system. Generally, we see carbons of this type involved in double bonds, as in benzene. If we simply add an electron and proton to this carbon, we arrive at a three-connected nitrogen with a lone pair in its 2pz orbital. This nitrogen atom, which we'll call the N3 nitrogen, donates two electrons to the pi system. The lone pair in the 2pz orbital is not basic because it is involved in aromatic pi bonding. Two connected nitrogens are commonly found in aromatic compounds as well. At these atoms, the third substituent of the N3 has been replaced by a lone pair, and now only a single electron is present in the nitrogen's 2pz orbital. This atom, which is typically involved in a double bond, is called the N2 nitrogen. O1 and O2 oxygen atoms are analogous to N2 and N3 nitrogen atoms. O1 atoms are connected to only one other atom. The atom's two lone pairs both reside in sp2 hybrids, and only one electron sits in the 2pz orbital. Typically, we find this lone electron involved in pi bonding with an adjacent pz orbital. The carbonyl group is a classic example. O2 atoms are connected to two other groups. One of the lone pairs of an O2 atom is able to reside in a 2pz orbital and participate in aromatic pi bonding. However, the other must reside in an sp2 hybrid orbital as the 2pz orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Thus, we see that the lone pair in the 2pz orbital is more N3-like, while the lone pair in the sp2 hybrid is more N2-like. We'll see more of these orbitals in upcoming webcasts, but for now, keep in mind that we can reason about the basicity and nucleophilicity of lone pairs based on their containing orbitals. By now, you should have the ability to count electrons within pi systems as well, including those containing heteroatoms. Use the pi electron counts on this slide to help guide you.